Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be editing this amazing photograph from the Photos in Color community in Lightroom. Theme tune! Boo, 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 boo. Dee, 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 dee. The crab today. The crab. The crab. I'm going to edit this photograph that was sent in by John Shields. It's actually an amazing portrait image that looks like it was shot in a studio probably, but I'm going to be doing this edit. Now, if you would like me to edit one of your photographs, all you have to do is head over to the Photos in Color Facebook page and send in an image and I'll try and edit it for you. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at what we're going to do today. So this is the image here sent in by John Shields. Now, I just wanna say, as a starting image, this is great. Let's go over to library and have a look at the information here. So it was an 85 millimeter, shot at ISO 1000, uh, shot on a Canon 6D. Personally, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. The f-stop is 1.8. John has got this pin sharp, which is really great, it's a little dark. So let's come over here to Lightroom, uh, the develop module at the top here, and start making the edit. So I can see what he's done, he's been nice and safe not to blow out any of the highlights in the forehead or anything like this. Looking at the eyes, it looked like it was shot with probably an Octobox or something like that, or some kind of a soft box to get this really nice fall off here, maybe even a beauty dish, but I'm gonna go for an Octobox instead is my guess. John, if you're watching this, please let me know what it was shot with. So, it looks great anyway. So what I, the first thing I would do is I would boot, look at the exposure here. Now I don't actually want to lift up the exposure because it's just making the image look very flat, plain and simple. I would not wanna do that with this image. But what I would want to do is lift up those shadows just a hair, okay? And let's have a look, uh, oh, let's bring up those highlights a little and maybe even the whites. No, let's just have a look what happens up here. We can see it's a dark image. If we actually drag the histogram, we can start moving this around a little bit. I do want to lift all of it up here, which is our exposure hair. Okay, this looks nice. We have lifted the exposure and the highlights and shadows and I'm gonna boost these whites a little, okay. So let's look at the before and the after. Just a few changes there, not much, but it's looking great. The next thing I would do is I would go and work on the eyes. Most important thing on a portrait image. So I take the brush tool, and for this one, I double click effect to reset. What I like to do is boost the clarity, and I would want to also lift the exposure just a little bit, because the clarity has a tendency to make things dark. Now. What I would do is literally paint over the eyes. Now what's really important here is with the clarity tool, look if I go too far, it ends up going a little bit too much often. So I'm gonna go quite a long way on this image, 50, and I am gonna boost the exposure by 0.4, I think. So let's come out of this. Oh, those eyes are looking amazing. Let's look at the before and the after. Definitely we're starting to go somewhere with this image already. Now, what I love about this image is the feeling of it. Like it's dark, it's a little bit moody, it's really simple, and I want to keep it at that. What I don't want to do is kind of lighten it up and ruin the image, I want to keep this feeling. So, I'm gonna actually boost this shallow depth of field even more by using the radial tool up here, and I'm just gonna select this area over the eyes like so. And let's hit O so we can see what we're editing. Now I'm gonna do the reverse. So invert this and the rest of the image look is gonna go red. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull this clarity down just a little bit, but the sharpness I'm gonna make really low down here. Okay, and let's reset the exposure. So now let's come and have a look at it. So it's kind of ruined the image, but we've kept the eyes nice and sharp. So we go brush, erase, and let's start bringing back where we want it to be. So these lips we want to stay ultra sharp, okay? So let's just basically, if we look at the press O, we can paint out with a mask there. And let's really make sure we get all of these eyes, like so, and then that's looking great. Now if we hit O and now by zooming in, by using the navigator up here, you see it's looking great, but our fall off is really hard. 
So what we're going to come in here and do, but again, I'm going to come back into brush, erase, and now I'm going to set it about 50. Okay. And what I can do when it's at 50 is just continually paint over areas that I want to slowly bring back in. I don't want to do it all in one go. So like that is looking great. Okay. Now let's just zoom back out. Okay. And I know, so I want to be kind of rough with this. I know that I want to bring back some of this detail in his facial hair just to really keep him popping. And I'm just going to smoothly go over these areas. And what I really want to do, this is a great trick, is I'm going to erase quite a lot of this. Okay. And up in the hair area, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring back the focus on a few areas. Okay. Now, Oh, I just came out of that tool accidentally. So let's come back into brush. Uh, sorry, radio filter. Click on this one. Brush. I just lost that for some reason. Okay. I double tapped on my Wacom tablet. Okay. And let's bring in the mask so we can see exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I, I'm getting rid of certain areas of where I'm adding that essentially a blur. So it's the focus of that image. And what this is doing essentially is it's going to bring back some of that focus. Okay. Now I'm going to paint over this with a low flow to bring, start bring, cause I don't want these issues to be too hard on the image. So again, it looks kind of odd what I'm doing, but it's kind of what you do in Photoshop. I'm kind of layering this now by painting out sections. There you go. But I have to paint out the other sections first. Okay. So this is now starting to look great. So let's come back. Let's come out of this tool and let's look at the before and the after. So we have brought in, a, we're drawing ourselves in a little tiny bit. Now I'm going to do a few of the edits with the colors before we go back to some of those tools. Now what I want to do is come down to the split toning and I'm going to add some yellow into the highlights because that's where his face is. So I'm going to warm that up a little bit and I'm going to add some blue into the shadows like so, but I'm going to push this towards the shadows. So I can see that's too cold if the other way, so lift it all the way up here. So there we go. And let's keep this blue like so. Oh, this is starting to get really moody now. And I love this. Great. That's looking wonderful. And now what I want to do is look at this luminance area down here. Cause what I want to do is I want to pull anything that's blue and in the greens down, make it darker, but where these skin tones are, I'm just going to lift them up a hair and the same thing with the saturation, just going to lift these up a little and bring the rest of it down like so. We can see that it just makes some really subtle differences. The next thing is a tone curve. Now I'm going to go into the individual channels. And if you don't see this, you click on the button on the side here, the little button, you click on it. So I can go into individual channels. Now what I want to do is I want to lift the reds a little bit because the image has kind of a brown tone. So I want to highlight the brown by adding a little red, adding a little green, like so into the highlights is where the target is. And then the blue, essentially I'm going to bring it back, but only in the shadows. So what we can actually, see, it's gone a little bit too far. We've added this little bit of a brown feel. So look at the before and the after it's kind of got this brownish tone to it. And that's really what I want. I'm going to bring the reds back in the shadows, but not too far actually like so. Great. The next thing I'm going to come all the way to the very bottom of this image and I'm actually going to use the camera calibration and in the, see where it's got, you've got green and red primary. I'm going to take the green because I see I've got green over here. There's not much green in the image. I'm actually going to take this back. Watch on the saturation. I'm going to pull this all the way down to minus 60 ish. And look at that. Now it's made this really nice moody image, which I absolutely am loving. Now then I'm going to add a little bit more focus to this. So I'm going to come back into the radial and I'm going to create this radial filter over his face like so. And what I'm going to do here is going to add a little yellow, add a little to the highlights. So I'm going to bring him out a little bit. And I'm going to boost the sharpness of that area. In fact, I'm going to take that yellow out. I don't like it like so. 
that's added some extra contrast and tone to this. Then I'm gonna add yet another radial filter. I love adding the radial filters when it comes to a portrait image, okay? And I'm gonna invert this mask, and then with this one, I'm going to add some blues around the face. I don't wanna to go too far like this, but just little blues, and I'm gonna bring this back like so. Ooh, I like this. Now what I am gonna do is a final thing on this, because I think it's gone too harsh. I'm gonna reduce this, the contrast a little bit, and I am actually now gonna boost the exposure. So now let's come back in before and after. Okay, it's a little too bright actually, because I want to keep that moody. Now, because of the style of this image, I'm going to scroll down and I want to add some grain. Okay, so around here, around 30 is where I want to go. Let's zoom in. I have a tutorial on grain so you can learn all about this. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger, the grain. Oh, that looks great. Not too far. You can really push grain and ruin an image. Let's come back out. Now let's look at the before and the after. This image now, for me, it's absolutely coming alive. It looks so dramatic and moody, which I love. So now we've done that, I'm just gonna have a little bit more of a play around here. Now what I wanna do inside this is I'm gonna knock the blacks up a hair and I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast to the image. So that's pulling down on the darks and I'm boosting up here the highlights, but I want to pull the, the center back a little bit. Add it a little bit too much in the highlights. Okay. I think that's the image. Perfect. Let's look at the before and let's look at the after. Absolutely love this image. Now, one final technique I'm gonna show you is we can see a little thing here, blemish on the skin. So let's have a look at how we would go around fixing that. I'm gonna take this one over here, which is the clone tool, and I'm literally gonna shrink my brush down and I'm gonna click on it, like so. And it's gonna find a different area that looks similar, and watch what's gonna happen. It's just gonna get rid of it. Amazing. And also, let's get rid of these shadows. Let's get rid of this under here. Now, we can do this with the brush tool. All we have to do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go, we're gonna lift the, the shadows up in these areas. Now, you have to be very careful about this because you can ruin an image very quickly by trying to do this in Lightroom. It's more of a Photoshop kind of a thing. But I'm just gonna come in under here and we're gonna lift up those shadows Press O so we can see what we're looking at. That's what we're gonna just lift the shadows on. In those areas. Come O back out. You see it's added this white tone to it, so I've gone too far. So I'm gonna pull this back here. And I'm gonna reduce the contrast in this area. Just a hair. So now let's come out. Let's look at the before the after. Great. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I could keep going all day on this image. So that's how I would edit this portrait in Lightroom. Now remember, this is how I would do it, but there's a million different ways in Lightroom that you could edit this image. If you like what I did, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like what I did, please give me a thumbs up, but also leave me a comment down here and tell me what you think of the edit, what you would do differently. And also, um, send in a photograph on the Photos and Color Facebook page and I can edit one of your images. Uh, that's it for today. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Boom. Yeah. <laughs>